Welcome, Welcome everybody, everybody to the first podcast of wait, wait. What you could know is the title. Uh, I'm not wearing sunglasses because it's sunny inside, but the uh, ideas we uh, share around here can get ridiculously bright. That's why I'm wearing sunglasses. So this is the first uh, episode of WIC, which is called what you could know. So this is about you and what you could know and how you can get further into uh, all of the information that is uh, readily available for you. Now, um, there's a lot of talk about the matrix that we supposedly are living in a matrix. And, um, well, I don't even doubt that anymore. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm just looking for, always for clues, uh, how this matrix is, is built up. So I'm like, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this matrix. And in this first episode, I wanted to talk about the things you can do to get information because it's fairly easy. There are people out there that know exactly how, uh, this matrix is built up. So uh, basically, we're in a computer game, uh, a computer game that we all control from the inside. I will get into uh, details about that later. But um, these people that know how this matrix is built up, they're usually uh, involved in in all sorts of activities like uh, movies or uh, politics or and they tell us about stuff so uh, you know I'm not saying that it's this big conspiracy I'm just saying that there are people that in uh, more or less know how this uh, matrix is built up and they give us hints and most of the time uh, they give us hints in the form of films, series, uh, TV shows, whatever they can find, uh, commercials. Sometimes politicians let some things bleed through. And uh, they're basically telling us, not in a clear and cut sense. So it's not like uh, a sliced bread ready for you to uh, to put some butter on, no? they 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 put it out there it is really clear but you have to be in a certain state to understand so when you're looking at a film or if you're you're watching a film or you're watching a show or or anything you have to understand that some of the things that seem far fetched that you're looking at on the screen are actually more based in truth than you might think. And this is a very hard, hard concept, but this is where you need to start. You need to start with these hints because these hints can give you a lot of information. And if you um, lay them over your life as a sort of a, a, a template, then you will see some things starting to make sense if you are uh, connecting to the things that are weird, because there are weird things. Um, I would say a good show to start with is Fringe. Fringe is a, a wonderful, uh, the wonderful series that um, that seems far fetched, but there are a lot of things in there and a lot of clues and hints about. Uh, about real life. So one of the things they, they talk about is deja vu. And um, there are a lot of myths and stories about deja vu. But in this series, it's carefully explained that deja vu is actually uh, you remembering an event that happened differently in another timeline. Well, timeline is something else we'll be going into. And um, space is something that we're 
going to be going into. But so if you have deja vu, you you encounter something that seems familiar, but it is always a little bit off. Why is it a little bit off? Because it's not exactly how you remember it, because you remember it from somewhere and some time, which is also which are debatable uh, concepts. But you remember it from from a place in time uh, that you where you are not now at the moment. And also, this is debatable because you are there. We'll get into the details of that, but that's basically how they explain deja vu. So that's a good hint. Um, they have the multiple world theory. Uh, well, actually, in the series, they have two. So kind of limited. But, you know, it'll give you a sense of what is possible. Uh, another good example is uh, heroes, you know, people that are, uh, that have uh, special abilities. I'm not saying that, uh, that we, we can all do this, but technically we should be able to do all of it because uh, we're only using, I think, maximum 15% of our brains. And, and there's a reason for that, why uh, it is such a low number. I'm pretty convinced that there is a, a great number of people that use less than 2% of their brains. I can encounter them every day in all sorts of activities. So I don't know. I don't know where to go with that, but... Uh, I know that the brain is capable of so much more and we have a unique, unique brain compared to animals because we can make a distinction between um, reacting emotionally and reacting in, a, in an animal way, which uh, animals both have, but they can't make, um, they can't weigh their possibilities. They either go in defense mode or attack mode, or they go in an emotional state. We, however, are able to take a little bit of difference, distance from these two things and then analyze the situation and then make, a, make a, an informed choice, which is the best way to go. So our brain is far more capable than we think. And I think these uh, special abilities, especially stuff like uh, levitation and that kind of stuff, there's uh, ample evidence uh, in our past, especially when you look at the ancient cultures, and that that was uh, a real possibility. Why else would we have this uh, specific type of brain? So uh, I'm not going to go deep into our origins. That's a different episode, but I'm just saying uh, the next time you uh, watch a movie or uh, a series or whatever, keep an eye out for things that seem implausible to the least or impossible to the max. Just uh, open your mind and um, see how accepting these ideas is real and explain some things that you have seen or heard, or maybe um, it could be even a feeling that you have. And this is one of the things that's very underrated, the feelings that we have. Somehow we need to be all scientific now these days. We, we, we need everything um, uh, proven. So there's no room for our creative capabilities anymore because our creative capabilities are mostly seated in uh, our feelings and the trust in our instincts. So you can see seeing is believing. Well, that's not how it works. There are a lot of people now that are saying, oh, you have to believe it first, otherwise you don't see it. Uh, that's also not entirely true. Um, the, the thing you need to do is not believe, you need to have trust. 
You need to have trust that things are possible and then you'll witness them unfolding. And that's how the world works. And that's uh, my hint into the matrix. So go see your movies and I'll help you along with everything else. All right. It was the first episode of WIC, What You Could Know, Understanding the Matrix, Part 1. I'll see you all again with Understanding the Matrix, Part 2. Bye.